It's the aviary. Mandaran duck or Aix galericulata is a medium-sized duck species with a length of about 41 to 49 centimeters and a wingspan between 65 and 75 centimeters. They are often considered the most beautiful ducks in the world. No wonder these ducks got that nickname. Just look at their appearance. We are sure all of us will be amazed to see them. They are like antique paintings or ornaments. Magnificent. The beauty of their feathers even makes them often depicted in oriental arts. The oldest poems containing the Mandaran duck were written in the 7th century BC in China. The poem is said to have been translated by a British linguist, translator, and missionary, James Legg. However, only the male Mandaran ducks have a colorful appearance. In comparison, the females are dull. Their heads are gray, with brown backs, white eye circles and outlines and pale beaks. Juvenile Mandarin ducks have almost the same appearance as adult female Mandarin ducks. And coincidentally, one of Irfan's friends gave him a pair of juvenile Mandarin ducks so they could be placed in the aviary. Now let's see their release in the pond. Mandaran duck is native to East Asia, to be precise, China and Japan. But now they can be found in many countries. In addition to these two countries, they can also be found in Korea and parts of Russia. They have even been introduced in Western Europe and the United States and form feral populations there. It is noted that the first Mandaran ducks were imported into Britain in the mid-18th century. The habitats they like are small ponds surrounded by many trees or the banks of a lush river. They prefer to live in lowlands, although they can do so at an altitude of up to 1,500 meters above sea level when breeding. They also usually avoid lakes or large open water areas. However, in Europe, they live in more open habitats, such as lake shores, water meadows, and cultivated areas with nearby forests. In winter, Mandarin ducks in East Asia usually migrate to the lowlands of eastern China or southern Japan. In winter, they sometimes dwell in marshes, open rivers, flooded fields, or even the shores of lagoons and estuaries. Keep in mind that they prefer fresh water. It is only in winter that they may be seen in salty waters. One other anomaly in winter is that these ducks will congregate in fairly large groups. Naturally, they are usually seen alone, in pairs, or small groups. Mandarin ducks are excellent flyers. They can maneuver with amazing agility, flying through trees before perching on top of them. Yes, they are ducks that often perch in trees, especially trees above the water. Even so, they usually find food by walking on land. Their main diet is grains and plants, but their diet changes with the changing seasons. In autumn and winter, they do eat seeds and plants. But in the spring, they mostly eat insects, snails, aquatic plants, and small fish. While in summer, they prefer worms, small snakes, mollusks, small fish, 
and frogs as their diet. Their feeding time occurs at dawn or dusk. They are shy animals. They often hide under trees, such as overhanging willows. But they may become bolder if they interact with humans more often. One other interesting fact is that the females never quack. They make several squeaky calls when they encounter danger, such as a fox, mink, or beaver. For the duck species, mandarins are unique in their nests. Yes, they nest in holes in trees. And although their nests are in wooded areas near lakes, marshes, or shallow ponds, they are sometimes located far above the water. In April or May, female mandarins lay 9 to 12 eggs and then incubate them alone without the help of the males. The males protect their mates from harm during the incubation period, but they will leave before the eggs hatch. As the eggs hatch, the female will fly down and try to persuade the ducklings to jump from the nest. The feathers of the ducklings are soft and light, making them less likely to hurt when jumping down. Then after they have all jumped, the mother will lead them to the nearest water. The male parent will also come back at this time to protect his ducklings. In China, Japan, and Korea, the mandarin duck has been considered a symbol of love and fidelity. Mandarin duck figurines are often used as gifts for newlyweds or as decorations at weddings. In the traditional culture of the three countries, mandarin ducks are believed to have only one partner in their lifetime. In other words, they are loyal to their partner. But the reality is not like that. Mandarin ducks, like most ducks, will look for and have a new partner after the breeding season is over. In the fall, to be precise. And like many other ducks, the male mandarin duck molts after the breeding season into eclipse plumage. At that time, their appearance was almost similar to that of female mandarin ducks. The difference between the two can be seen from the beak. The beak of the male is bright red or yellow-orange. In addition, males will not have a crest during eclipse plumage, and their eye lines are less clear. The mandarin duck is closely related to the wood duck, and the females of the two species are almost identical. However, no hybrid has ever been recorded between the mandarin and the wood duck. Mandarin ducks have a chromosomal abnormality that makes it impossible for them to produce hybrids with other types of ducks. The status of the mandarin duck on the IUCN list is still classified as least concern. But due to forest destruction, their populations in China and Russia have declined. Hopefully, this pair of mandarin ducks in the aviary can grow up healthily so that later on, their young can be released into the wild and form a feral population in Indonesia. So that's the explanation for these beautiful ducks. Hopefully, this information can be helpful for you, and see you in the next episode.